Welcome to Three Skulls Tavern, a channel devoted to tabletop role-playing games by Free League Publishing. This show is sponsored by Worldmill, online server hosting for the Foundry Virtual Tabletop. To support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash mattk. For a minimum of $2 per month, you get access to a ton of extra content. Hi, and welcome back to session one of my Forbidden Lands solo game here on Three Skulls Tavern. I'm the host of the channel, Matt, and if you haven't watched it already, I have recorded a session zero for this campaign. It's only about a half an hour long, and I basically talk about what solo gaming is and how I've set up this campaign. So how I created a character, what tools I'm using, how I'm going to be using them. Very, very overview type of stuff, um, but it might help to get an idea for what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to try and keep this in character as much as possible, but I will be slowing things down as needed to talk about rules and oracles and that sort of thing. Uh, because part of the thing I wanted to do with this is to actually make sure that um, you can follow along and you can see how the whole solo gaming process works. So without any further ado, let's join Udo Pebbletoes in the Ravenlands. And it is currently dawn on the 35th of Falwain as Udo heads into the nearby forest from the homeland of Belivar, or Belifar, sorry, uh, which he's leaving. He's leaving because he stole, I should say I, let me, let me try and keep this in the first person. Um, I stole a tapestry a few nights ago. And there was a bit of heat that came with this. I didn't get captured or anything, but I realized that Belafar as, as a kind of, as a region, as, a, as an area, is too small for me. And I need, to, I need to leave, really. I need to go see the world. I'm a young halfling, and I've got wanderlust, you know? I've, I've got skills, and I need to put these to use. I need to get rich, I need to get famous, and make a name for myself. And that's not gonna happen if I'm staying in this uh, sleepy, this sleepy land. So I sell the tapestry for as much as I can. I can. I use the money to buy some supplies and I set off into the forest to find my friend Yubi. Yubi is a, is a goblin who is a friend of mine and we've been friends since childhood. Yubi is a hunter. She's also a mute. Yes, that's right, a mute. And no, I'm not choosing her to be a mute so that the focus can stay on my character. Actually, yes, I am. That's exactly why she's a mute. Uh, that way I don't have to have necessarily too much uh, pressure, at least initially, to, um, to have a lot of dialogue between two characters. Although there can be uh, some social elements there, as we'll see. So we have arranged to meet up with Yubi here on the 35th at dawn inside the forest. And as we meet up together... Um, we don't say anything, we just kind of, you know, I, I, I step into the forest, Yubi steps out from behind a tree, and she's been waiting for me. We nod to each other, shift our, like, hitch our backpacks up around our, um, around our shoulders, and head on our way. So we're starting, as you can see here in Foundry, we're starting in this, in this hex here. And we're following a legend, and I'm going to show you the legend here over on the screen. I'm going to drag it down over here. This is a randomly created legend, and this is the legend that I've heard about that we're gonna go, we're gonna gonna co pursue. And it's the legend of the robber chieftain's horde. A long time ago, before the shift, there was an evil robber chieftain. They sought a family member because of friendship and traveled to a hill located on the other side of the Forbidden Lands in the marshlands toward the north. Interesting. As the legend goes, it is said that they died in battle and that at the location there is a dwarven artifact, but also manic goblins. Manic goblins, all right, I'm with a goblin right now. Uh, that's interesting, but that's, that's what I've heard about. So I've heard that there's this treasure, this dwarven artifact that has been basically probably buried in a shallow grave or you know has, has not been found somewhere off to the north in these marshlands and um, I won't go into any more into that, but uh, I have run a, a um, as a GM, I've run a campaign of Forbidden Lands on this channel, and it started off in the marshlands to the north of this map. So it's kind of an interesting development there. 
uh, randomly generated, of course, as well. So we decide to head towards the north. So I'm going to have this as our starting hex. We're not going to be rolling anything, but we are going to be moving. And the idea is that I think we're going to be moving deeper into the forest. By the way, the reason the, the um, fog of war isn't on this land is because this is halfling land. And I'm assuming that up to the, the edge of the forest and in some of these forests, I am familiar with the territory because I grew up here. Um, that's why it's the fog of war is off for it. But now I'm heading off into the unknown. I'm heading into goblin territory. This is These are goblin woods. Um, and I think we're going to... Um, hmm. I think we're going to move directly north. So we trudge through the trees for a while and um, the weather, what's the weather like actually today? Let's, let's see what the weather's like. Scattered clouds, but mostly clear. So there's no rain or anything like that. I have not found a way to change the temperature to Celsius. I am not in North America, so Fahrenheit is very hard for me to figure out what that means. Um, but I am assuming 71 is probably around 20, 15 to 20 degrees, somewhere in that range. Um, so perfectly fine, perfectly fine weather for, for traveling. And in fact, it's nice that the that there's a bit of cloud cover. Not that it matters in the forest, but it just means that the sun's not beating down on us. Um, although Fallwain is the end of autumn, so we're getting close to the uh, to the winter months soon. So just something to bear in mind. So we trudge through for a number of hours. Um, I'm just going to advance this along. Um, I really need to um, double check something. In fact, I'm going to open the compendium right now. Um, one of the journals. So if I click on the journal here and I go down to the journey tab. I'm trying to remember what this is. It's in the journey tab. Yeah. Okay. If I open this journey, this journeying journal here, this tells me how, um, how quickly I can move through a hex. And, um, I'm trying to see here it is. Do, 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 do. Do, difficult terrain. Okay, so it's it's this bit I'm looking for here. The rule of thumb is that I can hike through, or that we can hike through two hexagons per quarter day in open terrain and one hexagon per day per quarter day in difficult terrain and we're currently in a forest and the forest i believe is difficult terrain i'm just gonna there's a table down here somewhere uh where is that table here it is here uh so the forest a forest is actually open terrain so it only becomes difficult terrain when it's dark so i can actually move um i can move through here yeah uh, we can move two two spaces through here. So I think rather than going deeper into the forest, we're going to just head north and try and maybe skirt around the the darker parts of it. So um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna use the first so two hexes per quarter day. Per a quarter day is like three hours. So we're gonna advance this clock like three hours ahead as we move as we move through this hex to the so. I'm saying that we've arrived, we've met up in this hex at seven, so I'm not rolling for an encounter or anything like that for this hex, but we're gonna say it's gonna take us three hours to travel through it. So I'm gonna progress this, uh, whoops, by an hour to three. And we're gonna move us up here into this next one. And this is where I'm doing things slightly differently from the core rule book. I, instead of um, rolling for a random encounter, I have an oracle that I'm gonna be using instead. And it's this oracle here that I've kind of used uh, the idea from uh, Forbidden Hero, which there'll be a link to this in the in the channel description. Forbidden Hero has you roll six base die, and depending on how many um, swords and skulls you get, answers a yes or no uh, kind of oracle. However, I'm using it here for um, for hex exploration, and the idea is I'm asking it as an oracle: Do I have a random encounter in this hex? I roll six base dice, and depending on what they come back with, I have here what that means. And that's either, yes, there's going to be a random encounter, I can then roll for the random encounter, or no, with what that means, because there is nothing in there. And if it's a wash, then there's a complication, and it's an adventure site. 
So, <laughs> um, we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be the first dice roll of the game. I'm gonna be rolling, I'm gonna open up the chat here um, so you can see it. And I'm gonna be rolling this one here. I'm gonna be rolling six base dice. And the question is, is there a random encounter in this hex? Ooh, two skulls means no. Everything's fine. All right, we're off to a good start. So we're going to go back over here. I'm going to close this down. Click on my character. I've, unfortunately, every time I navigate away from this screen, um, I have I see the map and I have to click back on it. So that's something, um, unfortunately, as the, G I'm, as the GM here, I'm just going to have to uh, kind of live with. But that's fine. So there's nothing in this... Um, in this forest, we're just continually moving through. Um, we still have no change with the weather, so I'm gonna leave that. And we continue moving along our way. We're gonna keep going north, I think. So we're gonna take another we're gonna take another three hours to get through here. We're gonna progress the clock three hours. In fact, we're gonna progress it to noon. It's interesting, the dawn was at seven and noon is at 12. That makes it um, five hour progression. I'm just gonna do this a little bit differently, but yeah. So at noon we get into this into this new square. So we moved our two hexes um, in a quarter day, and we're going to now see if they're. We're going to ask the same question. We ask this question every time we enter a new hex, um, and we're going back to the oracle. We're asking the oracle, "Is there a random encounter in this hex?" <laughs> a bit of a cock die there, but it's okay. There's a a single one. It's a yes, but. And the yes, but means that yes, there's an encounter, but we didn't spot it soon enough. So there's going to be a minus two to my keep the watch roll to see if, if we spot it. One thing I forgot to do completely, by the way, um, is decide who's being who in the party. So if I open up the journal again and I go to journeying, And I scroll down, you can see when you're hiking, you get basically have somebody leading the way. Leading the way is a keep watch role. It's basically, um, sorry, lead the way is not a keep watch. Sorry, lead the way is survival. That's what it is. So um, there's a survival. Oh, man, I didn't want to do that. Lead the way is survival. So that's probably going to be me leading the way. And scouting is keeping watch is... Um, is that one. So it says every time you enter a new hex, I have to make a survival roll modified by the Pathfinder. Success means you find a viable path into the hexagon and you move out without any problems. I forgot to do that before. Um, so I'm gonna do that now. And then the keep watch, by the way, is if there is an encounter, that's for whoever's keeping watch, um, the lookout to roll to see if we can see them before we see them and maybe go around them or something like that. So we're gonna we're gonna play this a, li a little bit um, kind of loose at the moment. So um, if I open up my character sheet, and the first thing to do is to roll survival to see if uh, if the um, if the lead the way roll has gone well. Yeah, it hasn't, which I believe means <laughs> there's a mishap. Um, I'm just going to double check that very quickly before I do this. It has been a while since I've played this again. Um, every time you make... Immediately suffer. So failure, unfor failure unfortunately, in this case means that I suffer a mishap. So I have actually a a table here that I can just click on. So I click here uh, for a table. I go to journeys and mishaps and I go to lead the way mishaps. Click on the table and I roll. A persistent animal. A squirrel, bird, or other small animal follows you around and doesn't leave you alone. The animal causes trouble described by the GM. It might make a noise at some inappropriate time, eat your food, or steal something. Interesting. Okay, so I think a squirrel... Um, a squirrel makes a lot of sense. We're in a forest after all. Um, and there's just some squirrel that is f fascinated with us and is following us around. It's twerping at us. It is not going away. 
Um, and we're kind of trudging, trudging along, trying to make as much as much time as we can um, before nightfall, because you know we're we're trying to we're trying to set out and get off to the north. But this squirrel just won't leave us alone. Um, I'm going to bear this in mind because there is an encounter coming up that we have a minus two on. So this squirrel is probably going to cause problems for us, possibly, um, coming up. So to to handle this encounter, um, first we're going to have you be roll for her scouting. Thankfully, her scouting, she only has three wits. She has two in scouting, though. Um, but because it was a yes but on this on this table here, um, I roll with a minus two to the keep watch roll. That means the scouting is basically nil. So we go to here to modifier, we hit minus two, we hit the roll button. She's only going to be rolling three base dice. And of course, didn't get any successes there. Um, I don't think I'm going to be pushing with Yubi. I think the pushing is... Um, I mean, she does have some talents. We'll see about that. I, I'm not sure how I feel about about um, you know Yubi being too involved as a sidekick. Um, but we now have. I now have to roll for an encounter. So to roll for the encounter, um, I actually have here for the tables. I have an encounter table thing here. So we've got random encounters, and we have forest. We're in a forest right now. So let's see what we've got. A duel in the woods. Mm -hmm. If I click on this, I'm only going to read the first italic, italicized bit. I'm going to try not to look at the rest of it. There we go. I didn't look. <laughs> you hear the sounds of battle in a violent bellowing mixed with battle songs and cries. Further along the road, an orc is dueling with a tattooed elf. They lunge at each other and parry without hitting each other. Occasionally, they stop in order to hurl insults at one another. Now, we're a goblin and a halfling, and we are not gonna, we don't wanna mess with an orc. I don't wanna mess with an orc. I do not wanna, like, the elf looks very graceful when it's, while it's fighting, and there's absolute, absolutely no way that I, um, I want us to get involved with this, these, these two dueling creatures. But unfortunately, they spot us. And I'm just gonna read a little bit further ahead to see what that means exactly. The, the elf is a wandering sap carver, um, has long tried to approach the orc clan to study their customs and understand them. She became acquainted with a smith. When she discovered his great singing voice, she got the idea of putting on a dramatic theatrical scene with him, performing both among the orcs and the elves. As their friendship is rather controversial, they practice far away in the forest. Okay, so these are actually two thespians um, out in the forest practicing their arts because if they were to try and practice it around anyone else, uh, they would... <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be very good. Okay, so I'm going to be asking the oracle a question here. And I'm going to be asking the, the oracle, um, when they notice us, what is their attitude toward us? And uh, honestly, the way you should do solo when you're asking an oracle is, do, you only ask the oracle if there isn't, like, go with your gut always for the first instance, right? Don't necessarily roll for absolutely everything, although you can roll for everything if you want to, as that can produce some interesting results. However, if I think about something like, um, there's something here which, which goes with, uh, I think, I've, I haven't got it here, actually. Um, so, like, how they feel toward, like, a, um, what's the term I'm looking for? So, if I wanted to have, like, a reaction table for an NPC, I could roll on that. But I think from the description for this encounter, um, they... They are they aren't actually properly fighting each other. They are just they are just out there practicing. So these two are hammering away at each other, and we see this happening, and, and we're both we're both scared. We don't want to get in between these two, and the only thing we can think of is to try and sneak around them somehow because we need to go past them. And it's at that moment that the squirrel that's been following us comes hopping down and starts twittering like mad, jumping up and down on the on a branch just out of reach from us and kind of twittering at us. Immediately, the orc and the elf stop fighting and turn towards the sound. What is it? Says the elf. The orc says, I think we're being watched. You! Come out from behind that tree, pointing to the tree that we're hiding behind. Yubi and I look at each other and realize that something a bit strange is going on here. Like, they've stopped fighting? Uh, step out. 
shrug, step out from behind the, the tree with my hands in the air. Please, please. We're just traveling through. Please don't hurt us. Um, it's just myself and, and my companion here. And um, I kind of gesture, and Yubi comes out from behind the tree. Ah, a halfling and a goblin. Strange, strange fellows to be traveling together, says the orc. Oh, well, yes, maybe, but um, we're friends, and we're we're off, we're off to travel and see the Ravenlands. The elf smiles at that. Off to see the Ravenlands. Interesting. And and what do you expect to what do you expect to find in the Ravenlands, other than your your swift death? <laughs> um, I don't like the sound of that. I don't like the sound of her laughing. So I kind of I kind of cross my arms across my chest like this. Well, off to find treasure, of course, to make a name for myself. I might not look like much. I might not be as big or as tall as either of you, but I can get by. I'll be fine. You'll remember my name when I'm done, when I've found my treasure. Remember your name, says the orc. I must have missed it. Oh, <laughs> Udo Pebbletoes, I say, puffing my chest out. The laugh, the elf bursts out laughing. Udo Pebbletoes, <laughs> what a quaint name. Yes, Udo, we'll, we'll remember you. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll make a song about you or, or something of that sort. I don't think we'll probably make a... Um, a performance out of your out of your adventures, but if we hear some things about you, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll make a song about it. How's that sound, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I like the sound of that actually. I kind of stroke my stroke my my beardless chin and think for a moment about. I get little visions in my head of of becoming a famous halfling and the song of my deeds kind of being sung around the Ravenlands. It goes all a bit to my head. And Yubi uses the, um, she's holding her short bow in her hand. It's not strung. Um, she basically gives me a, a sharp jab in the ribs with it. Oh, hey. Yeah, because I was nodding, you know, I was daydreaming. <sighs> Shake my head, look, look at the two of them and say, can we go on our way? Yes, yes, go on, go on, says the orc and waves us away. And with that, we, um, we kind of nod our thanks and we go past. So that's just a very simple uh, encounter. I'm gonna step out of out of character for a second. Um, handled handled like that. Uh, th this is kind of you can do however you want with solo role playing. Um, if I was doing this by myself, I wouldn't be talking to myself. I'd probably be writing things down. So this is a little bit different to how a solo role play like encounter might go for you. Um, but yeah. That's me going with my gut. I didn't really roll in for any oracles in terms of like their, uh, how they feel about me or anything like that. I just went with the text as presented from the random encounter and kind of and kind of rolled with it. Okay, so we're gonna look at the um, we're gonna look at the map again. And this might change for the next session. I might create a player um, a player instance so that I can flick between these and there's no issues there. Just need to make sure that I can roll um, my macros and things when I if I do that. Anyway, so it's it's noon. We've just entered this hex. It's going to take us um, it's going to take us the rest of the um, it's going to take us basically three hours to go through this hex. We're still in light forest territory, um, and I think we're going to. This is this is the thing that's confusing me slightly here with having an actual clock um, rather than the shifts is that I can't see exactly which shift we're in. And with 12 o'clock, I know that we're between the daytime and the evening shift. And it's in the evening shift that you normally want to set up camp. We need a full shift for that. So in fact, it actually might make more sense to stop um, because we've traveled to, it was the morning, we had the morning shift. No, we've traveled through the, from, so we're kind of traveling halfway through the morning to get through the first one, halfway through, oh man, this is getting, I need to, I need to maybe think about doing this for my next session. <laughs> um, changing how this looks because the, the clock is a little bit confusing um, with fitting in with the Forbidden Lands mechanics. But basically, um, I think what we're going to do is, I'm just going to keep playing with it, looking at it as a clock. We're going to travel for, through one more hex and then we're going to make camp and we're going to spend six hours, which is a shift to make camp. And when that's done, we're going to um, we're going to rest and take see what happens with the night. So, as we move north into the next hex here, 
it's still, I'm gonna kind of cheat here just to show you what this means. You can see that there's this like line here of dark forest, right? And this is lighter forest. In fact, we technically were kind of in the light, the darker forest here. Um, it's hard to see with the fog of war on the difference between the two. Um, and I think if I move myself back down, I think this is still dark forest. So in fact, um, this takes a full quarter day to move through. So moving through here is actually has taken us to the three o'clock. Whoops. It's taken us to the three o'clock point. And it's going to take us a full six hours to move to the next one, which would actually um, take us into the night. Now, we could actually think about setting up camp with the... Um, yeah, maybe we should set up camp with the orc and the elf, but I think we're probably a bit intimidated by them. So we move a little bit away from them. We travel through to the kind of beyond the edge of the hex. We're traveling through the hex and we make, we're going to make camp in the hex. So now we're going to be looking at the rules to see exactly how that works. So if I pull up here again, journeys, um, you can see the journey chapter. If I scroll down to making camp, basically one person can make camp, which is a survival role. And one person can do a number of other things, including going foraging, going hunting, uh, looking for water, that sort of thing. So um, making camp, I think is gonna be myself because I'm the one with a survival skill. So we're gonna, I'm gonna roll that first. And I'm not gonna, I think Yubi's gonna go do something else while I'm doing that. Um, so, oh, in fact, this is the thing we need to think about. We need to have somebody keeping watch. So somebody actually needs to be, <laughs> this is going to make for really slow going. Um, I didn't actually think about this too much because the way this works is you need to sleep regularly so that you don't gain the sleepy condition. And if there are only two of us, that means one of us has to sleep while the other one keeps watch. So we need two full, um, to get a full, a full night's sleep, we each need to be sleeping for one, um, for one shift while the other one keeps watch. That means there are only two shifts available in the day where we can travel or do other things while we're awake. And the problem that that brings is that you need a full shift to make camp unless you just want to make a temporary camp. And <laughs> with two with two characters, that's going to be quite difficult. I know um, I actually have somebody here in, um, in chat called Attila in the YouTube chat. He's one of the Patreon supporters who's watching live. And I know he's played, uh, he's played Forbidden Land solo and has mentioned this before. But basically, um, it does mean you can only travel one segment per day and then you need to make camp and look for other things for the, for the remaining segment so that you can both sleep quite well at night. Or there's some other things you can do where you can, um, one person can rest without having made camp, like just sleep under a tree or something like that. Um, we might do that in future, but I think for now we're gonna we're gonna set up camp. Um, I don't want this to be. Oh wow, it's going dark at four p.m. Interesting. <sighs> so we're spending six hours, right? We're gonna take this to nine o'clock. Whoops. Um, and. I think what we're going to do is actually Yubi is not going to, um, she's going to sleep. She's going to sleep while I'm making camp. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. She's going to sleep while I'm making camp. So if I pull up the journal here and we go down to keeping watch, uh, no, we go down to making camp and resting. Um, you have to sleep, da, 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 da. bare ground. It is possible to sleep in the wilderness without making camp. You simply find a suitable tree to sleep under. You save the time it takes to make camp, but everyone in the group must make a survival roll to find a good spot to sleep. Everyone in the group must make one. Interesting. Um, failure means the individual doesn't sleep at all and thus becomes sleepy. Okay, so I think we just, everyone rolls and you just need one success to do that. Um, you, could F, you would also suffer the effects of the cold because you don't have a fire next to you. Um, so I think I basically what that means is we roll twice for that. Whoops. Let's pull up the actors. Well, that was right. Huh. Survival roll. Got a success. 
I just need the one success, as you can see there. I don't need to push that or anything. And uh, Yubi, we find a tree for Yubi to sit under. So she sits under this tree and she has a snooze while I'm making camp. And for me to make camp, I also have to make a survival roll. Unfortunately, I said that was to find her a spot to sleep first. So this is now going to be my survival roll. Um, I think in future we'll roll for Yubi first to see if she can find us find one. Um, and if she can't, then I'll I'll roll. But um, regardless, I'm gonna roll again. Whoop! Not scouting. Survival for making camp. <laughs> That's a failure. <laughs> ah. Here we go. Starting already. So if I go down here to reference and I click on make camp. Um, I don't have the quartermaster talent. If my role fails, the camp is less pleasant. You still make a camp where you can sleep and rest, but the GM makes a hidden role on the mishap table below. I can spring it on you anytime while you are in the camp. Okay, so here I roll on a mishap table for make camp. Let's see what happens. So this is this is basically um, the fire dies, right? I'm not sure, you know, UB is meant to be keeping watch and, you know, stoking the fire and everything. Um, but while I'm sleeping, so this is, it's 9, 9 o'clock p.m. We're going to advance the clock six more hours, so it's going to take us to um, to 3 a.m. So we're going to go to, uh, we're going to advance it to midnight the next day, and then we're going to advance it three more hours. So 3 a.m. It's kind of weird. I'm just trying to think about this. Um... <laughs> I'm just going to advance this to what I would consider 6 a.m., which is through the night, because um, that was our evening. No, then we slept through the night, and now it's kind of like it. Um, it's the morning time now, right? Um, again, I need to I need to figure this out, but I'm just going to basically advance the clock to six. We're going to take it to six o'clock the next morning, um, and that's the yeah. That's the time just before just before noon. And unfortunately during that time, everyone in the group has to roll for the effects of cold. So see page 111, we're gonna open that up very quickly. And we're gonna go to where it says combat and damage. And we go to, um, I think it's under conditions. Yep, cold. To roll endurance. Extra protection like a blanket can give you a gear dice to roll. We both have blankets, so I think we'll both be wrapped with those. Um, but if you fail, you roll, you become cold. So we're going to both roll for endurance and see how well we do. Endurance. <laughs> I got no skill in that. Hey, but I got a success. A single six is all I need. Right? Down here. One success. And how does Yubi do? Oh, I forgot I have a blanket, right? The blanket gives a plus one. I'm just going to go over there and click on it very quickly. You've got this blanket here. Click on that, and it gives a plus one against cold. So we'll, we will remember for her. So we click on endurance. We add one for gear, and we hit roll. Look at that, two successes. So we don't actually get cold. So the fire goes out. It is a cold night, but it doesn't matter. We both kind of endure that cold night, and we wake up in the morning ready to keep going. And... Yeah, this is a, a short, quick look at how the um, at how the travel mechanics in this game work. I'm gonna try and see if I can replace the clock before my next session, um, so that I've actually got something a little bit easier to work with within the framework of the rules of Forbidden Lands with these um, these four shifts. And I'll see you next time. So thanks very much for watching. Um, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe and like button. And if you want to catch me um, in social media, check the links below, and leave a comment if you. Uh, if you want to, uh, yeah, to say anything about this, uh, for any requests, anything like that, I'll, I'll be reading all the comments and we'll respond. So catch you next time.